All right, the perf page provides us with real-time, dynamic, and accurate performance data for the helicopter. Our pressure altitude and free air temperature are the current uh, altitude and temperature sensed by the helicopter air data system, and our gross weight is the sum total of our aircraft basic weight, all the munitions on board the aircraft, so that's all of our rockets, all of our Hellfires, all of our 30 millimeter, and the total fuel on board. This value will increase and decrease depending on whether or not we're expending munitions, taking munitions on, getting more gas, losing gas, all that kind of fun stuff. Our required in-ground effect hover power is calculated at 5 feet, and our required out-of-ground effect hover power is calculated at 80 feet. Um, the thing to keep in mind with that, though, is that anytime we're operating greater than one rotor diameter, we are going to be considered to be operating out-of-ground effect, and uh, we can expect to see that out-of-ground effect hover torque value right there. Our go to and go torque IG and OG is calculated at 5 feet, and uh, this allows us to perform a 5 foot hover power check and determine whether or not we have in ground effect or out of ground effect power or both, or if we don't have either um, as well. Indicated is indicated, it's what we're currently pulling. The max gross weights, in ground effect, uh, and out of ground effect for dual engine. Uh, really, the big one that I'm worried about is the out of ground effect uh, torque right there. And uh, what I could do is use that to uh, inform myself of how much weight I can load on the aircraft and still be able to hover out of ground effect, but there's one problem with that. If I do that, I'm going to go over here to the plan page real quick, and I'm going to punch in the uh, current conditions. So that was 60 feet, PA, and 20 degrees, All right? Um, and then 18.7, I'm going to punch in 18,750 pounds to the page. All right, so when I do that, notice that my out-of-ground effect hover power required is now 100%. Uh, that puts me right at my Chapter 5 uh, continuous torque limit, which is 100%. Anytime I go above 100%, I can only do so for about 6 seconds, as so long as I keep myself between 101 and 115, and if I exceed 115, I've over-torqued the helicopter or damaged the helicopter. Alright, so that's bad, and I don't want to do that. So for me, the way I'll typically do this is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just punch in a weight of 17,600 pounds, and what that should give me is about a 9% power margin. Alright, that 9% power margin um, between that 100% and what is required uh, should give me about a 450 per foot per minute rate of descent. So if I take 9%, that power margin between my 100% and my required OG hover power, uh, divide it in half, times it by 100, it gives me 450 foot per minute. All right, And that comes from a general planning rule that for every 100 foot per minute rate of descent, it's about 2% of torque required to arrest that rate of descent. All right, we'll clear that out. So uh, that's kind of the way I like to do it. I like having power. I like having, um, you know, the ability to arrest my rate of descent without, you know, exceeding limits and breaking the helicopter, right? So basically, the way I apply that is if I am at a high-speed forward flight and I do a decel to then terminate to an OGE hover, I will not allow my rate of descent to exceed that calculated value. So for the example, it was 450 foot per minute. I will not exceed 450 foot per minute uh, rate of descent. The dual engine max torque and single engine max torque, it's the maximum amount of power that the engines can provide um, in those given conditions, right? Uh, the thing to note is that when you reach this value, either dual engine or single engine, and actually what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to set this up to something kind of high in altitude and high in temperature, 30 degrees, there we go. The power you, you just saw will drop off very rapidly, right? So I'm up at 6,500 feet, it's 30 degrees outside. My dual engine max torque is now 95%. Notice that for 17,600 pounds, I cannot hover out of ground effect. And I know that because my required OG hover torque is greater than my dual engine max torque, um, which is 95, so that, that's a given. My required in-ground effect hover torque is greater than my go-no-go -no -go torque OGE, all right? So that's also telling me that I don't have OGE hover power. And then my uh, planned, or even if I'm on the current, gross weight exceeds my maximum allowable gross weight dual engine for OGE as well, right? 
So those three ways, those are three ways that I can actually determine whether or not I have uh, OG power or not. OG power is kind of important. Uh, so let's see. Some of the ways that I use this. Current, there's nothing I can do. Current is current. It, it does what it does. Uh, the max page, what I will do is I will set the maximum conditions that I plan to operate at and the maximum at with the maximum gross weight I plan to operate at as well. So for this example, 8,000 feet, 30 degrees, and 17,600 pounds. That's what I'm planning on. So now I've got all that performance data there. For the plan page, I will set the plan page up like I'm uh, for my FARP, uh, whatever my primary uh, refueling point is, right? So for this example, we'll say that that FARP is at 6,500 feet and it's 30 degrees and I plan to arrive there at a weight of 15,000 pounds. I can tell real quick that I do have OG hover power because my required uh, torque in ground effect is less than my go no -go torque OGE. My OGE required hover torque is less than my dual engine uh, max torque. And then my gross weight, my planned arrival gross weight is less than my max gross weight dual engine for OG as well. Those are all good things. Um, Kind of the so what of this too is if I'm going through my landing sequence and I'm trying to like land to this you know high hot and heavy area and the helicopters um, well heavy I keep saying heavy emphasizing heavy it's heavy whoa anyway um, I kind of need to have an idea of how I'm going to get into that that landing area right so let's say I want to maintain a 500 foot per minute rate of descent uh, throughout the entirety of the approach because you know I've got to keep it um, above my dual engine airspeed, I need, um, and I need to be able to transfer that airspeed to arrest my rate of descent and all that kind of stuff, right? Um, well, really, I need to be able to stop my rate of descent with my available power. So the way I calculate that is I take that 500 foot per minute planned rate of descent. So 500 foot per minute, I'm going to divide that by 100, 5%, and I'm going to times that by 2. So that's going to be 10%. Now I'm going to take that 10% add it to my required torque in-ground effect, so 66% plus 66, and that's going to work out to 76. I'm now going to compare 76% to my dual engine max torque of 95%. So long as this value is less than that value, I can support that rate of descent and arrest the rate of descent um, at the bottom just by pulling in 76%. Like, you pull in that power, the helicopter will stop in-ground effect. Uh, it's, it's immutable fact. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty cool. Um, there are cases where, you know, maybe it's a, a softer surface or um, a pinnacle or something like that where you may want to increase that power just a little bit, you know, so then you would add maybe another 5%, do the comparison again, determine whether or not you have the power available for that, uh, and, and work it from there. So, I mean, here, let's say I was landing at, uh, I don't know, 16,000, right? Uh, 72 plus 10, that's still 82. 82 is still less than 95, so that would be fine. I would even be able to do a 500 foot per minute rate of descent, arrest it by pulling in 10% above my required IG hover power and stopping the helicopter. This cruise block over here, uh, max range airspeed, or uh, max range torque and fuel flow, and then max range airspeed is right here in the true airspeed block. Uh, that's my best miles per gallon. If I want to go the furthest distance uh, with the, the least amount of fuel burn, uh, or most sufficient fuel burn, then that's the airspeed I'm going to go at. And then uh, if I want to have maximum loiter time over the uh, the AO, then I'm going to be at 47% uh, torque, 73 knots, and burning somewhere around 764. So that's max station time. That's max distance. Um, that's really all I can say on that. Another thing I'll talk about real quick is notice here that I have this difference between the dual engine max torque and my single engine max torque. Uh, it's also hot. You know, uh, that's an indicator that my primary concern for power li performance limiting today is going to be TGT. So if I look at this here, I have a dual engine TGT limiter of 867 and a single engine TGT limiter of 896. I hit those values. Like I said, those things, that, that's a wall. Um, I hit that value, the rotor is going to droop. Um, that's a really bad day. If I've got cold temperatures... Uh, say maybe something less than about uh, negative 10 degrees. I'm just going to go 20 degrees here just to kind of show. Notice that I've got um, 
105 and 106. These values are within one of each other. Sometimes they'll be matched. If they're matched or within 1% of each other, then that's an indicator that I am now NG limited. Um, and this value here, my NG value, will probably be somewhere around 95%. My TGTs will be pretty cool. Uh, you know, maybe they'll be like 600, 700, something like that, but they'll be nowhere near my TGT limiter values. Um, if I find that myself in that situation, the rotor will begin to decay or slow down or droop. Um, I'll lose lift. I'll fall out of the sky, and that's bad. The only way that you're going to be able to recover that aircraft is to reduce the collective, restore the rotor, gain forward airspeed. If you happen to be really close to the ground when that happens, well, you know, that's a bad day. Uh, you're going to impact the ground and you know, maybe you walk away, maybe you don't. I don't know. Let's see. What else can we talk about here? Oh, and your V&E. Velocity never exceed or not to exceed, right? Uh, don't exceed it. You may find yourself hitting retreating blade stall, which would be bad. Um, and you may find yourself, uh, or, or other things, you know. Uh, and it'll, it'll probably lead to bad results. So if you find yourself in that situation, slowly reduce the collective, re reduce the severity of the maneuver, um, and get the aircraft back under control. So, there you go. The perf page.